All right, what is up, everybody? Shout Scout 13 here, coming in with a, another video. This time, I am interviewing Pally from the Discord to talk about Rex and everything awesome that he does. And I just wanted to start out by talking about the different ways to enter in to win the Rebel Trooper Expansion Pack. There's multiple ways to win, and I'll explain all the different ways you can enter. So the first way is to be a member of the Discord. All you got to do is just sign up. Come on over here, start talking about whatever you want. You know, you can, if you've got any questions about Rebel List, Empire List, Guard List, talk about that. If you do commission painting, feel free to post that in there. If you want to get involved in a bunch of different things, come on, come on over. It's really nice to be able to see everybody talking and getting involved. The how I choose at least people to be entered in to win is the server level. And that's why I say just get involved a little bit and that'll help you enter. I just write everyone's name down uh, who enters in here. Another way to enter is to be a YouTube subscriber and leave a comment and that helps you to enter in to win. And another way to enter in to win is to be a member on Clan of Shadows. So all you have to do is kind of come on over here. You don't necessarily have to be a paying member to enter in to win, but if you are a paying member to help support this channel and everything I do, then it helps you get multiple entries in to win. So that is a great way to help. And this is unrelated to the giveaway, but if you want to head on over to theburnacademy.com and subscribe for 15 bucks a month and download the app, you're going to get three, four, five, and six day week workout programs, corrective exercise program to help you get back into the gym in case you've kind of maybe hurt something and you want to just try to get a little bit stronger, like a weak shoulder, a weak knee, anything like that, that kind of helps. At home workouts, abs and core program, cardio circuits, there's 120 different recipes, tr ways to track your progress. There's lots of great ways to keep you accountable and keep you going in the gym. And you can even message me while you're in there to kind of get an idea about the workouts. Or if you've got questions about workouts, feel free to come on in and give me a shout. These are a few of the people who I've trained before who have seen some good results. And yeah, so head on over there and become a member, download the app. But yeah, guys, I will go ahead and leave a you know a, a timestamp to kind of get you here into the the right spot but all right guys i'll get you straight to the interview what is up everybody so shout scout 0013 here reporting in um with pally over here how's it going and today we're gonna go over rex and a little bit more in detail about rex since um we were just talking right beforehand that you have played rex in at Worlds, at least two different times, and I feel like you are the the Discord Rex guy. I uh, there there I'm sure there are memes floating around somewhere about that. Yes. Yeah. So I figured, who else to ask about Rex or talk about Rex than you? So uh, if you want, I'll let you kind of take it away and give us your rundown over Rex. Yeah, I absolutely will. Um... I think it's important that we start with setting expectations here and that being the Rex guy, I'm going to be the first one to say he's not competitive yet. I think he's almost there and it's a very fine balance. You can absolutely play him competitive, which is the thing I've been doing. But if you're trying to go to a major tournament and you want to do the best you can, take a glow stick. If you want to take Rex and have a good time, that's that's why I'm here. So, um, absolutely. The let's start with his unit card. I think sure. um, we see that Rex, yeah, he's um, his points have changed a little bit over time, and he currently sits at 95 points. He has on him five health, courage two with red saves, and he surges to crit. He's one of the few units in Republic that does. Um, he shoots three red at range one to two and punches for two red. Um, the keywords that he has, you're looking at gunslinger. So when he makes an attack action, he may perform an additional attack against a different unit after resolving that. He has scout one. So he just gets a free scout, uh, free speed one move on deployment. Scouting party two. So after he scouts, you may take two units up to range two away from him that have not scouted yet and perform a scout with them, um, equal to Rex's scouting speed, and we'll get to that in a second. Sharpshooter one, 
and tactical one. So he negates a point of cover, and whenever he performs a move, he gets an aim. He is a clone trooper, so he can share those aims with other clones. Um, he comes with the ability to take a command upgrade, training, two gear options, and a grenade. Um, personally, I know I said Rex is 95 points. I I am of the opinion that Rex is um, what's it, 102 points. You always take the jetpack, and you always take Recon Intel. Um, Recon Intel is going to kick him up to Scout 2, so when he uses Scouting Party, now two units at range 2 of him are going to also Scout 2. The jetpack, because he's range 2, and we're going to see this a little bit with his command cards here, um, you want that jump too. It's going to keep him mobile, keep him from getting engaged. You can use the terrain to your benefit um, to put him into positions that your opponent can't easily deal with because he's only five health and without impervious and without native surge defense, he can pull surges from other clones, but Rex either is alive. He tends to either be alive at full health or just dead. So you really have to be cagey with him. So I think that's about that. Oh, um, some other upgrades I take. If I'm playing Rex by himself, which is what I usually do, I don't pair him with another named unit. Um, I put aggressive tactics on him. Those extra surges are life. If I am playing him with another unit, it kind of depends, but I've been dabbling with the steam leader and up close and personal and using him as a, as a close range brawler. So, uh, but again, we'll get into that here in a little bit with um, other pairings. Yeah, I was going to ask Rex if you. Com... Yeah. yeah, sorry, I was going to ask if you did like the esteemed leader on him, just because he is a little bit fragile, and you can kind of pack in some medics in the uh, list when you usually just have him or like a generic clone commander. So, it depends. If if Rex is my only like primary commander. I take aggressive tactics and I treat him like a hybrid support commander. His job the first half of the game is to not be seen, pump out tokens for the troops, and just be there issuing orders. The second half of the game, when I need him shooting, I probably also want the aggressive tactics for the first half and the second half, so it's like, eh, it, the steam leader would help, but it doesn't prevent him from dying. It just makes it harder. The, um, but when I am playing him with another, like the only pairing that I like to put him with is Obi Wan Kenobi and the Steam Leader on Rex with Obi Wan. You're you're basically never rolling defense dice on him. Okay. So I think that it's it's a situation where you're either digging into his support leader aspect with aggressive tactics, or you're digging into his brawler aspect. But you kind of need to go one way or the other because points in Republic is tight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so let's see. Rex's command cards. Um, I think Rex has three command cards that are specific to him, but I like to run him in 501st, which gives him three more, but I only run two of them. And then there's two the two generics here we'll talk about. Um in Attack of the Clones and Air Support. Starting with Rex, so I'm going to do a three pip here. Leaders of the 501st, or I'm sorry, not leaders, that's the 501st one. Rex is three pip. I don't ever take it. I forget what it's called. We're not programmed. Um, <laughs> thank you. We're not programmed. I don't ever take it. Um, it issues orders for four clone troopers. Um, when he activates, he recovers. And. Let's see. He gets two surge tokens and inspire two. I feel like that's these are a good lot thing. of great. That is insanely good. Four orders on a three pip is kind of rare. Um, the free recover is really good. The two surge tokens are really good, and the inspire is okay. the The problem is your command card selection is limited. And you need to think about you only have six rounds in a game. 
and when Rex dies, you lose access to his command cards, and you need him shooting at some point, and he will die. So instead of we're not programmed, if you take something like Attack of the Clones, it's very similar to we're not programmed, except it's one order less. Okay. But it has this cool text on it where you can give out a surge token to each unit that the card orders or remove a suppression. And what's important here is that suppression removal happens before the activation phase and can be key in pulling suppression off of low courage units like phase ones to be able to do things with them. With we're not programmed, Rex activating, getting the inspire, your opponent now has a chance to respond and suppress the units that the, the two suppression that you just pulled off and resuppress the unit. With Attack of the Clones, you're pulling it off early and potentially getting to do the double action that you needed to do straight away. Okay. And Attack of the Clones doesn't require Rex being alive. And this is kind of a theme here with Rex is good, but I think the game plan is anticipate him being dead. Which doesn't sound great, but it's actually interesting. Um, and I'll cover that in the, my, uh, the list that we have later. Okay. So that's Rex of 3 pip, and I covered Attack of the Clones at the same time. Um, his 2 pip, Take That Clinkers, has seen some errata to it. It still orders two troopers, but the way it works now versus when it came out is clone troopers with a face-up order token have to take an aim action to kick their range out by an additional uh, band to a maximum of four. Um, I won't get into what it used to do beforehand. It's not relevant anymore because it changed. Uh, what I like to do with this is I've found mortars and RPSs are fantastic for this ability because they're not trying to move anyways. I've been able to take that aim action, especially with a mortar. You take that aim action, you kick out your entire squad to range four, and you're really punching in and suppressing a unit potentially so they can't come back into range three and crack back at you. So you're playing a little standoffish. Um, it's, it's good. But I don't think you should always be trying to get that value out of it. At its worst, it's push, and that's not a bad thing. So, now, what do you, you think know. about this um, with commandos and or um, arc troopers or anyone else, maybe? So, <laughs> I'll start with commandos. Okay. There may be some play here with Delta. I think generic commandos are too action hungry to want to take an aim action. Um, you can do it. Um, it's not going to help the, the sniper config at all because it's already maxed out at four. So what you're doing is you're kicking out your anti-armor config to range three. And again, in a pinch, it's possible but I think they're super action hungry, and it's it, it's a rough it's a rough sell. So, um, what Rex is a toolbox. Everything he does is it gives you options, not to like the same degree as Yoda's guidance, which is completely busted. But everything gives you options. So you have the option with commandos to kick a range three um, anti armor shot out. Probably not the most efficient, but it's a thing you can do in the edge case that you need to do it. Uh, arc troopers, similar. If range two is a dangerous band, um, but the, I think arc troopers have more play because they're not trying to keep next to like a specific um, complete the mission token. So taking an aim to kick their range three guns out to range four is pretty good, especially with the fire support. Taking an aim to kick their range two guns out to range three as play to prevent units from being able to single move engage with you if you're exactly a range three. Um, again, it has play, but it's I think it's an option, not the plan. Now, what I have seen is with Bad Batch, Bad Batch has Deddy on them. 
and tactical one. And this is really interesting because what you can do here is if you take Rex and you scouting party bad badge that speed two forward and you play take that clinkers. Now bad badge can take the aim action, kick in the range out the three. They can perform a speed two move, getting their tactical one, and they have steady. So now they're scouting party range two or speed two, moving speed two. Shooting at range three, you're basically hitting just shy of range five outside your deployment zone. Nice. Off of that that shot. With and Bad Batch hits fairly reliably. And because you took the aim action and you have tactical, you have two aims for this. Um tech the cards were just released um the other day. Tech has the um cash aim. So there's a third one if you need it to really force it through. So I think there's some play here with Bad Batch specifically. But my my general plan is would we'll take that clinkers. I give the orders to my two mortars. I love double mortar units with um the fifth uh, trooper in there. And I just punch stuff at range four off the scouting party so that it's suppressed, I've dealt damage, and they have a harder time coming back to crack into me because they're suppressed. Because mortars. Yeah. No, that extra suppression really does help um, a lot. Absolutely. Um, take double mortars, folks. It's it's a dream. The Rex is one pip. I'm going to save till last, I think. Okay. I'm thinking about it. It's it's a little complicated. Um, let's hit the 501st cards real quick. The two that I care about here. Okay. Leaders of the 501st. Uh, the three pip. Rex is only Courage 2. Courage 2 is way better than Courage 1, but is not impossible to suppress. Giving Rex Indomitable, and subsequently your entire Courage 2 army and Bible First Indomitable, really make sure that you have all the actions that you need to be able to execute your game plan. Because um, Rex feels really bad when he's suppressed and only gets one action. And it's like, man, I, I need him shooting here or I need him double moving to an objective. We're getting into position for a later play. So having that indomitable across a Courage 2 army is insane. Absolutely. If you're playing 501st and Rex, take clears in the 501st. Um, and actually, I would highly recommend, as discussed earlier, take Attack of the Clones over We're Not Programmed because game plan is Rex is going to die at some point when rex dies you still have both your three pips worst case scenario um the 501st one pip which sits in the two pip slot lead lead from the front is an incredibly versatile card um their restriction let's see when building command hand um through this card so it has two pips after a friendly commander unit is issued order by this card, choose three other friendly units within the, the, the classic within memes, um, within range one of the commander unit. Each chosen unit gains an aim or dodge. Lead from the front is great because what you can do with this is if you need to nuke a unit, you can set up a bunch of aims to pull for one big shot from an arc or you can set up a bunch of dodges to take a giant attack that you know is coming in and really mitigate that threat. Um, and because it's a one pip, you have the option of either attacking with the unit that you need to to delete something or going with Rex straight away to just get the move for the tactical aim and dodging, creating a fourth dodge um, to mitigate that threat. So lead from the front it's having three one pips with rex is very good and it's incredibly flexible in it how you go about using it um i also want to talk about air support here air support i don't take in 501st but i do take in regular republic when i have rex it's a issue in order to a commander or heavy give it to whoever you want um, after a friendly commander or field commander activates, it may perform an attack with the weapon, which is a 
red, black, black, range four to infinite, beam two. Um, this is really good with Rex because Rex is sharpshooter. So at best, your opponent's going to be getting light cover for this attack. Uh, Rex has search crit. So you have search conversion for these attacks. The cheeky thing that you can do with air support, because it's beam says after you hit an additional target, you can chain it to, to another target with at range one of the first and another target at range one of the second for beam two. You may only fire support the initial shot though. Rex with Gunslinger, what you can do is you can turn beam off and instead Gunslinger two shots. They don't have to be at range one of each other and you can fire support both of them. So that is not a thing you're going to do every time, but it opens up a lot of tactical flexibility in like, hey, I've got like a single model um, sniper or um, strike team that I need to kill on one side of the board. And I've got a unit on the other side of the board, call it range three or four away from that strike team that I need to hit with a fire support. Being able to gunsling your two shots, again, you're, you're giving up an attack to do it, but it lets you have the flexibility to shoot whatever two targets you need to, regardless of how far apart away from each other they are. So, so. if you had a, a unit that was, I mean, in, clearly in range of Rex, and he could gunslinger, you can still okay. use this to shoot afterwards, is what you're, right? Absolutely. This is not an attack action. This is right. just an attack that happens. Okay. So, it is possible with this card, if your opponent's really spread out, to gunslinger two of Rex's pistol shots into two units, and also be able to beam three other units in the back line. Or Gunslinger, two other units in the back line. Hmm. So, That's pretty cool. I did not absolutely know. possible. The, the Rex is the only one that can do this, too, because he has Gunslinger. So, um, like I said, it's not, it's not the plan, but it's an option. And what I like with Rex is that every list I build is just loaded with options. Um, and I think the only command card left to talk about really is call me captain. Yeah. So I am of the opinion and people will call me crazy and that's fine. I am of the opinion, um, that call me captain is probably the second strongest command card in the game. And it's right behind, um, Yoda's one pit. Yeah. So, pretty tough to beat. Call me captain. It, it is pretty tough to beat. Yoda's one pip absolutely breaks the game, and I love it. Um, it's also attached to a 200 plus point unit. Yes. Um, call me captain says Captain Rex gains fire support. When he uses fire support, he does not flip his order token face down. What this means is that as long as Rex is in range two of stuff, if you attack it, he can fire support it as um as long as his order tokens face up and he's not engaged in melee. We'll get to that in a second. Um, while a friendly unit performs a melee attack, Clone Captain Rex can use his fire support to add a ranged weapon to the attack pool. So if you're pairing him with a Jedi, or you're running arcs or Wookiees, or even if you just have some phase twos that jumped in the melee with something. Rex gets to fire support in a melee. You thought tenacity was good. How about three red? Yeah, and uh, even paired when commandos unfortunately get stuck in melee, and they all have two, and maybe you have like a full unit, that's what, eight, eight black dice, and then maybe say that they're in range of their complete the mission token, so they still gain surge to or critical two, and then you're even fire supporting mm -hmm. Rex in there. That's what, 11 dice critical two in melee? Absolutely. So, yeah, that, um, that's insane. A couple, a couple uh, dice pulls here to consider. 
um, the eight black, three red melee with commandos. Um, five black, five white, three red for arc troopers. Uh, the six mini core squads that I like to run throw six black, three red. Like, that's in a, for a core squad, that's appreciable in melee. Um, y- you can punch plenty of Jedi down with that. Uh, Jedi. Anakin, I believe, is, is he five red or six? Five. It doesn't matter. Add three more. Yeah. Just, just add three more. <laughs> right? Jeez. Um, and still pierce three. It's, mm-hmm. and then all of your, um, range shots, right? So as long as Rex is in range, um, two, take an arc, take like a full arc echo. Five red, four black, four white at range two. You're gonna delete something. Um, I'm a fan of laser cannon, um, ATRDs. All right, cool. Now you have four red, two black. Search it hit. Like it, there's nothing that doesn't just get better by adding three red. Um, if you're in a nine activation army, which I like to be in a nine activation army, it's where, it's where I'm comfortable at. It's not impossible or even difficult to add 24 red dice over the course of that turn before Rex chooses. Hmm. Yeah. Now, a couple caveats with this. Um, if Rex's order gets turned face down, he loses the fire support. Uh, I think Dooku does this, maybe? Um, I, don't, I don't remember. If, uh, or there's ways to kick his order back into your order pool with, like, pen down um, mm-hmm. or whatnot. Or if Rex gets engaged in melee, it turns it off because he can't shoot out of melee. And this is why those jetpacks are so critical. If you find a pillar you can stand on or a small rock ledge or just a piece of terrain that you can set yourself, that you can't be engaged in or forced pushed out of, there's n- the only way for your opponent to deal with it is to kill him the hard way. He'll be in heavy cover because he's on terrain and it's a one pip, so you can grab whichever unit you gave an order with like the clone commander and just start going to town before your opponent has a chance to do anything about it. So you'll, you're guaranteed at least one. You're probably going to get a few. Um, you want to set this up probably by giving Rex an order the turn before, going with an absolute last, and then playing Call Me Captain. So you're doing like a last first. Um, your opponent will see it coming, but there's not a, like, th- that's just the name of the game for something this strong, to be able to add that many red dice in the turn. The other thing I've seen with Call Me Captain that you can do is if you set it up over an objective, even if you don't have any targets and you play it, sometimes on a critical turn, your opponent isn't going to want to move into that objective because of the threat of Call Me Captain. So there, there are situations where even if you don't add any extra red dice because they didn't move into range, you still got the W off of that because the threat of the thing was almost the scariest thing itself. Right. Um, playing Call Me Captain, and I'm talking about this a lot because I think this is the most important card. Playing Call Me Captain, um, if you try to force it in a match, if you try to create a situation to shove Rex in new to play it, you will get him killed for a minimum effect every time. Mm. Almost every single match will have a point where it makes sense to play the card. And when it does, there are the only other card, like I said, Yoda's one pip. This card has the potential to take a, a game lost and crack it wide open into a victory just from the sheer weight of fire you throw out. That's if he's still alive, I'm assuming. He's probably going to die this turn, right? Um, but I think... That's an okay sacrifice. So when when I build Rex list, I like to build a list that can function without Rex. Because I'm anticipating that there's going to be a point in time where he does die and I need my list to still do the thing. But I want him to have made enough of an impact that when he does die, it's too late. And Call Me Captain is the card that can get you there. Yeah. I was going to say, um, I remember there was an Ahsoka uh, list that 
try to get into melee with my commandos, and then I tried to rush them with another unit of commandos and uh, Padme, because she was in the back, and it just about finished her off. So I feel like that one pip is definitely worth it to get rid of anything coming into your lines, because you're probably, for the most part, I feel like you're never bringing a force user when you do have Rex. And so having some extra dice in a melee, especially red dice in the melee, really kind of helps to build up that uh, extra melee profile. Oh, 100%. Um, you can usually tell when the Force Eaters are going to want to dive. So you you almost like brace for impact and set up your, your line. Force User goes to the turn where they want to dive, and you play Call Me Captain. They now have two choices. They've either bluffed you and they're not going to dive that turn at which point cool shoot the ever living heck out of their glow stick if when you're playing with rex if you can see the glow stick you shoot the glow stick that's just the way that works eventually they will fail saves Mm -hmm. um if they do dive tie them up and just start punching like it's again they will fail saves and ever since the deflect change um their saves in melee aren't as good as they used to be. Oh, yeah. So, a bunch of clones uh, punching a, a Jedi or a Sith Lord with three extra red in that pool will do work. Um, the other thing I like doing is if I get, like, Ewoks, which are traditionally hard to shoot because of low profile, or something in an open transport, like um, a buddy of mine had Palpatine in a Gav tank, um, I take my ATR keys, I run them up and I kick with Call Me Captain. Now you're throwing surging hits, six red die pools, and just negating cover. Nice. Now, so, can you engage in a melee with someone who's being transported? In an open transport? As long as it's an open transport, you're not engaging in melee, but you are basing the transport. And then melee attacks will negate the cover that the open transport provides. Close transport can't do it, sorry, but a gap tank, a snail tank, um, the land speeder, anything that's an open transport, yeah, run up and kick it. So and you can kick the person inside is by just basing that you uh, can transport. Absolutely. Yep, one hundred percent. Awesome. So, hmm. yeah. Um, but again, everything around Rex is you're you're building a toolbox. Uh, something like Yoda. Yoda is a toolbox. Yoda brings the toolbox. Um, when you're building a Rex list, everything in your list needs to be a toolbox that can do multiple things. So, yeah, that's that's his command cards. Like I said, I think most of the time, you bring Call Me Captain, take that clinkers, and then if you're in 501st, you bring the 1 pip and the 3 pip, and you bring Attack of the Clones. Um... If you're pairing him with somebody else, and let's let's get into this, you're yeah. gonna bring Rex with another commander. Uh, I like a team leader. I like up close and personal. At that point, I think up close and personal. If you're not bringing somebody else, is a trap. Those those two dodges are not gonna keep him alive. It's cute. You'll have to put a little more into him. He'll still die. Um, spend the eight points elsewhere. Eight points is a lot in clones. Mm-hmm. Um. But when you're pairing him with somebody else, the only command card you bring is Call Me Captain because it is that backbreaking. What about also, pip, if you're then? bringing somebody else, hmm? what about his two pip then? Or do you bring air support instead? I tend to bring air support. Um, you can bring his two pip, but I like air support. Whenever you bring Rex with another named commander, let's say outside of Chewie, um, their command cards and abilities are often much more important than Rex's, so you want orders on them to be able to do their thing. So, like, if you bring Obi-Wan, Anakin, Yoda, um, you're taking their two pips. Um, And then... Your second two pip slot, you could take that clinkers. I like air support when I'm bringing somebody else because it gives me an, like a turn one crack if I'm not bringing Anakin. 
um, because Anakin obviously wants a um, hero of the Clone Wars, turn one. But, and um, air support can give orders to your other commander. So, with air support, you don't have to have the order to perform the attack, you just have to be a clone commander. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, when, when pairing it with other people, the only command card I bring is air support. Or no, I'm sorry, air support, we were just talking about that. The only one I bring is call me captain. Because it's just that good. Um, the Yoda, Yoda Rex is interesting because on the relentless turns, Rex can like move Gunslinger, move Gunslinger. It's fun. Um, on that's kind of it, really, with Yoda. I think I think Yoda has more important things he wants to be doing, like bringing Anakin for fun, bringing Obi Wan to like double charge them forward for a good time and keep Yoda protected. Bring in Chewbacca because Chewbacca's a toolbox that goes in Yoda's toolkit. Um there's other things Yoda wants to be doing besides Rex. Uh Anakin's interesting. Anakin's kind of a command card hog and he doesn't really support Rex in the way Rex wants if he's a uh, secondary commander. I think it's a it's a fun flavorful option. Probably not the best thing you could be doing. Um, Rex, Obi Wan though. Now this is spicy because Obi Wan, between between Steam Leader and now up close and personal because he's a secondary commander, and then Obi Wan's guardian and Suresu, and having core around Rex, you can easily take like eight to nine hit attacks and just never roll a single defense dice on Rex. Hmm. And just like spread it out across the whole army. Yeah, um, like... It's a thing I've done. <laughs> go, ahead. Go, ahead, go ahead. I was going to say just like the esteemed uh, leader with as many core you have around and then with Guardian, what, two, three mm -hmm. on Obi-Wan? Mm -hmm. So let's let's say you have three core by Rex, right? Because mm -hmm. Rex, Rex gets the scout up. You're probably going to scouting party OB to keep him in range of Rex. And then whatever other unit you want, probably Padme to put her in position. Um, let's say they roll eight into Rex, right? You was uh, two off for cover. Uh, now we're down to six. Three onto each of your core. So now you're down to three. At this point, you can either burn dodges if Rex had them from up close and personal or Padme. Or just Guardian the three on Obi Wan, and out of those eight hits that they got, Rex rolled zero saves. Hmm. So, um, if Obi has Barrier, now you're rolling zero saves on ten hits. Um, if Rex has his two dodges with all this other tech, now you're up to twelve hits that you're not rolling for. So, Rex and Obi Wan, I think, is actually an incredibly cheeky pairing. Um, that's interesting. I haven't explored it as far as I can. I used to fuss with it a bit, but points changes kind of, I went back to my primary list the last time we got points changes, but it is, it is a very fun press W aggro list. Um, Padme is interesting. And, and we talk about Padme because she's, the obvious Republic choice here. She's not a commander, but she might as well be, right? Right. Padme is an incredibly strong unit that I don't like playing myself. Um, she's really good at generating tokens to get your defenses up and set up extra aims to make your offense hit harder. And that's cool but my play style that I like to lean into with Rex is to hit first and hit hard. I'm of the opinion that dead models don't hurt. So if I can start the attrition game before you do, I would rather do that than take the time to generate tokens. Plus Padme is like 85 points. Um, a phase two with a mortar is 78. I, I like my phase two mortars. Like, I like them a lot. So, yeah, they're good and in cheap. Um, I really like how cheap they are. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of folks I've seen running like Phase One um, DC 15s for 76 points. I think it is. I'm like, okay, 
So if you spend two more points, you get Courage 2, Reliable 1, um, the same odds of rolling a crit and a, a target at range 4. So you haven't lost anything at range 4. And you get Suppressive. Okay, I'll spend the two points. Like, and yeah. it used to be rough because with Cumbersome, you couldn't shoot and move. Well, now you can. You can't move shoot, but you can shoot move. And it turns out if you're just trying to throw suppression out, that's fine. So, right. I had these really good. Padme is incredible. And if you're taking like Obi Wan or someone else, take Padme. Just do it. Um, but in like a Rex only list, I think you really want to be in 501st. And then you don't even have access to Padme, so it's not a question. Hmm. Well, yeah. Well, um, do you want. Were, were you wanting to um, get into your, your lists? Yeah, we can get into those a little bit. So, um, the first one, I think, the 800-point list. This is Rex 501st. This is my list. If you've been in any of the discords for an amount of time, you've seen this list. It's a meme at this point. Um like there's a spreadsheet for deployment charts and all that. Um, it's 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 a good time. Go uh, ask about Pally's list in guard chat in the big Discord. You'll get people laughing at you. Um, it's hilarious. But I took this list to Worlds back in twenty three or a variant of this, and I got what I was like thirty three out of the one twenty something that was there. Technically, world's best Rex player. I'll take it. Um, yeah. Um, and no, for those of you asking, there were other Rexes there. <laughs> um, you were just the best. But player. anyway, so it, that, yeah, it was there for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, 800 points, Rex 5 up first. We start with Rex. He's got a standard build, right? We've got a jetpack. We've got recon intel. We've got aggressive tactics. The, the loadout for him that I said earlier. This is going to get you the important surges that you need across your entire army. And it's going to let him be that support unit. Um, we also have a naked clone commander because it turns out just giving out an order every turn is gravy for setting up fire supports. Um, we have two mortar medic phase twos. Now, I waffle. I always like my six mini phase twos. That's a thing I do. Um, but I waffle between the medics or the just a fifth trooper and throwing targeting scopes on Echo. I'll get to him later. Um, currently I'm, I'm running the double medic, seeing how it works. I haven't really noticed a huge increase in value for it. Um, because losing the targeting scopes hurts, but it is what it is. Um... We also have, I'm going to say we have a, a strike team with the generic sniper. That's a choice. I understand that people like Echo in the strike team. I, the, I'm of the opinion that putting the generic sniper in a strike team when paired with the clone commander, clone commander bolsters the strike team himself, takes an aim, strike team gets an aim from tactical, and you now have two aims and a surge. You're back to hitting pretty reliably with that strike team. Um, if needed, you can slap in a mortar fire support and at worst you're at, what is it? It's red, three black, lethal one, crit one, suppressive, structure one. Okay. Yeah. That's still a pretty, uh, um, early hit. Right. And that's at best, you're at a full phase two mortar squad behind that sniper. You're, you're going to take some stuff out. So my sniper also tends to sit on the back objective and back cap and just kind of put shots down range with support from the clone commander. So, again, while Echo is more efficient than a generic sniper in a strike team, I think with the commander pairing, it's fine. It, it does everything you need it to do. Um, I have two laser cannon ATRTs. These are my toolboxes. I love them. Have armor? I got laser cannons. Have melee threats? I have RT kicks. Um, have a lot of incoming pain trying to kill my clones. I have two mobile walls that I can just shove out there and put in front of you so you have to shoot them down before you kill my clones. Like, the ATRTs do everything you want them to do for 
what is it like 70 points i think yeah for the laser cannon rt yeah so it's they're not the best at any one thing but they are the best toolbox for doing a bunch of things yeah, because you can you can now, even use just the regular mm-hmm. gun on the ATRT. That's like what a uh, two black and a white, or a oh, black and it's, two white. It's, it's one black, two white, impact one, crit one. Yeah, search it. So, um, on fixed front at range. No, it's not. So at range four, your laser cannoning stuff because it's a better pool. At range three, into heavy cover, I. Tend to switch to the uh, the handgun because just punching a crit through is kind of reliable, and it lets me maneuver if I need to and not have to worry about that front arc. Um, the ATRTs are they are probably one of the most efficient toolbox units I've come across in a long time. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Now the two. Units that actually this list is built around is Echo and Fives. Again, guard chat, you've heard this before, I'm sorry. Um, we have a Phase 2 with Fives, a comms tech with long-range comm link, and recon intel. The long-range comm link is there so that I can get that direct order from literally anywhere. Doesn't matter how far away I am. Um... Excuse me. Echo is in a full arc. I put him in a full arc because when the full arc inevitably gets shot up and is down to a single model, it turns out you still have a strike team as long as Echo is in there. Uh, Because he has a leader keyword, so he's the last one to die. So um, it's one of those cases where if you put the generic sniper in there that takes four wounds, you have an awkward dude that just makes tokens. Um, If you put Echo in there and you take four wounds you still have a sniper. So he also has the reliable one, crit one, two red. And then I take the jetpacks and offensive push. And then if I'm not taking medics, I take targeting scopes here. Excuse me. All right. Echo and fives are my, my playmakers in this list. I deploy all my stuff except for echo and fives. And then I shove them all the way off in the middle of nowhere on the other side of the map. It's why I have disarray in this list. So I can put Echo and Fives on the disarray um, deployment side. They, with the the recon intel on Fives and Echo scouting, if you play Take That Clinkers, Fives can get a range four shot, probably off a of deployment. Um, anything else, you... You have three one pips to be able to maneuver them into a position in a back line or on a flank and pick something that you want dead. Play the one pip, direct fives, coordinate echo, and just delete something with a two red, 12 black, potentially four white fire support shot. The, um, the offensive push is usually used on this first shot to get an extra aim and just make sure that I'm going to delete whatever it is I'm shooting at. So, this is kind of the secret spice of this list. I've got Echo and Fives on one flank, adding pressure. I've got two fully stacked mortar units suppressing and hitting at range. I've got a sniper and a clone commander to do my objective work, and Rex. It's just making tokens for the main body until it's time for him to jump up and start doing call me captain things. Hmm. Um, oh, point of note, I didn't mention earlier, the scouting party is ridiculously good. It scouts both your mortars into position to immediately get a turn one take the clinker shot in your opponent's deployment. It scouts whatever important pieces you need out of position in case your opponent deployed super aggressive and you're like, wow, my deployment's not where I want to be anymore and I want to shift all the way to the left or to the right. It lets you completely displace. The other thing it does is if you're playing hostage, it lets you scouting part of the hostage. So your opponent places your hostage, you place theirs, Rex scouts up, and as long as you can get to range 
two of that hostage, which there are very few instances where you can't. You can just pull them back speed two. If you get advanced positions, you pull them back speed three. Man. It is. Yeah. It is That's a free powerful. move that you get straight up the gate. It is incredibly powerful. Yeah, um, especially against like, force means... users. Mm -hmm. No, 100%. Yeah, they um, can get in quick. The getting them just that speed two move back at worst to speed two, right? Now, when you activate with them, if you, depending on how the battlefield looks, your options are one, move, move, close to your deployment zone, get them safe, or shoot, move, because you have a six mini mortar, you can probably do a fair amount of damage to something and suppress it and still get a single move out of it. It's a bit riskier, but it's a play I do. Or if you're really feeling risky and your opponent's not playing super aggressive, you take that scouting party to pull them back into a position, and then you get them in order on that first round, and you fire support with them. Incredibly risky, but it's a play you can do, and it's one I've done, and I've just deleted units with it because they're safe for the round, so there's nothing that can be done about it. Then you play a one pip next turn, direct them the order if needed, and just scoot them back. So, yeah. It's, That's awesome. The entire list is built around the idea that I can't, whenever I'm pl playing against another list that wants to do a specific thing, I'm never going to do that thing better than that. If I'm playing against triple speeders, they're going to, they're going to have a lot of maneuverability on me. I can hedge out where they want to go because I now have this flank force that's just going to delete speeders. But they're going to be more maneuverable than me. If I'm playing against uh, glow sticks, their melee is better than mine. If you're playing against um, Tempest Force, those um, Death Trooper range 4 shots with HH-12s are going to be better than your mortar shots. Right? Most every list that you play against is going to do their thing better than you do their thing. What you want to leverage with a list like this is cracking into what they're weak at. So, cool. Tempest Force has great range 4. Well, let me get into 3 off the scouting party and just start picking you apart with fire-supported pure shots. Death Troopers don't like that. Um, you have a Jedi. Cool. I'm going to suppress everything around your Jedi, and every time I can see it, I'm going to shoot it. Yoda, being one of the most broken Jedi in the game, does not like being suppressed. With two mortars, you can do it. Yoda with one action is suddenly really bad. Yeah. Um, it, it's just the way of it, right? And then when their uh, melee threats get in, you just tear them to shreds with uh, Call Me Captain and punching or shooting. Um, if they're playing an armor game, your armor's not as good as theirs, but you can kill all their troops. It's not hard, and your armor can hold theirs off from range four. So it's you're 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 never the game plan is to never do your opponent's game plan is to crack into what they don't want to do regardless of the deployment or the objective or the condition and find the pressure points and pry into them to pull it apart. And that's what this kind of generalist list does. And then, like we talked about earlier, because I anticipate Rex is going to die, when he inevitably does, what has happened is I only brought two of his command cards. So I'm not down any command cards, probably. Um... They put a whole bunch of resources into killing him, so my other stuff didn't get shot up, and my army functions without Rex. So he is a piece of the whole and an amplifier, but not the plan of the army. Right. That's cool. So. Uh, yeah. Well, I know that you've got a, a second list uh, with the Bad Batch in it. Yeah. So, um, Bad Batch recently got spoiled completely, and I've been futzing around with this for a little while. I don't know how good it is, but it looks incredibly fun. We have um, Rex with his standard fair loadout. I think I put a Steam Leader on him in this one just because I was like, hey, we're going to play Aggro Rex because we're going to threat saturate. Um, two generic commandos with the HQ uplink, and I put a Hunter on them because 
without hunters laying around, you still don't have enough points to get heavies on the core. So I was like, cool, I'm going to put hunter on them. Their job with high velocity is going to be to punch into um, things with dodges and try to, sh to strip as many wounds from that as possible. Uh, it turns out Jedi don't like high velocity, especially in decent dipoles. We have Delta Squad, again with Hunter, because free aims are nice. I also, with the HQ uplink, I understand that they have the independent recover, but I'm of the opinion that having the option to give them an order is worth the 10 points. They also have target too. And then um, offensive push, because, because they have the independent recover, I think there's some real spicy tech you can get into, like giving them an order for two aims, moving, popping the offensive port push to get a third aim, shooting with a fire support off of four black. It's not a lot, but it turns out four red, four black will still punch into stuff with three aims. And then... Possibly the, critical too. Um, next, yeah. And next round, you don't give them an order, so they just recover all of that. Um... Oh, yeah, and you have three commandos, so you have three um, complete the mission tokens on the board. Your coverage is primo. Then, like I was talking about earlier, the Bad Batch. I think there's some play here with Bad Batch and Take That Clankers for opening salvos. Um, again, I haven't had time to, to like, test this all yet. But it, if I could tell you that Bad Batch round one could full punch into a unit, range call it four and three quarters from your deployment zone that sounds pretty good i think on average they do 4.1 wounds into what's it 4.1 wounds into heavy cover red saves and that's i say heavy cover i understand they have sharpshooter i do all my math based on assuming heavy cover and then applying relevant keywords so you're 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 punching 4.1 into red saves at range four and three quarter from the deployment zone. Like you're just going to touch something. Round one would take that clankers on them. Um, call me captain doesn't do anything for them because you can't fire support them. But your opponent now has this interesting choice of, do I shut down this Rex that is going to start making the commando shoot for seven red? Or do I deal with bad batch jumping down my throat and just tearing my units apart. I like guess it's, it's not a you're you're presenting your opponent with a threat saturation that's nothing but bad choices. So that's yeah. that's kind of where I am with this. I haven't figured out the battle deck yet. Um the command hand is kind of like a rough draft. But I think I think there's something here. I just haven't quite nailed it down completely. We'll have to kind of see what the Bad Batch does really well with, and hopefully people can get a little bit of practice, even in, on TTS, hopefully, just to see how well they do. Because, I'm t I mean, it does sound like they they can go really well with Rex, and you'd have a really nice all-clone army. And because they're 160, and that's it, like, that's the their price point period, it... I feel like you do have a lot of room to be able to put a lot of other activations in there and get good nine act lists, but it's just hard. I don't know what kind of like force user they could go with, or if you should just put them all in a clone only list, or you know how Padme could affect them with her exemplar, or maybe even like I feel like if you had a Yoda Bad Batch, that would be an extremely expensive, very low activation list but maybe it could be powerful i have no clue well the interesting the interesting thing with bad batch having steady is that even if you guidance them they're shooting twice around doing that and because they generate their tokens on tactical and uh crosshair just has pierce not lethal you're probably gonna get between like Oh, let's say three and a half to four point one wounds every time they shoot. So it's they have the ability with Yoda to just kill units every round. Pick a pick a core unit and it just dies. Pick a Death Trooper squad. Maybe not dies, but it's gonna be hurting. 
So, um, it, but it is really expensive. I, I think Bad Batch and Yoda, you're probably at either a beefy seven or a lean eight. Well, if you do Yoda with Force Push, Barrier, and sadly Guidance instead of Burst of Speed with Padme just naked, the Bad Batch, mm -hmm. three Phase 1s that are naked, and two Clone Commandos with HQ Uplink, you're at eight activations and lots of Exemplar token generation between Yoda quick uh guidancing quick thinking a second time on padme and then you have the bad batch yeah. who can use the tokens but there's I mean, obviously there's no fire support but you still have at least two clone commandos and the bad batch with yoda i mean you're looking at a an eight activation 796 list yeah. i think i think in this list and i like this list this is interesting i don't think you guidance padme's quick thinking unless you don't have anything better to do I think right. you guidance bad batch for the move shoot because that second, because you're so low on beefy attacks, that second shot, you're really going to need to be debilitating. Um, but Padme's quick thinking dodge, Yoda's barrier, um, you will have defensive tech to not shirk all the damage, but you can mitigate a bit and you're really playing the, the damage race. Yeah, I mean, you I could think probably... you can get them for free. Okay. Well, let's just say you take Padme out of it. You just do a, a clone commando, so that you have three clone commandos, Bad Batch, Yoda, three Phase Ones. Again, eight activations mm -hmm. is the same same price tag because Padme's eighty five, and so is a clone yeah. commando with HQ. So, I feel like that would probably give you more firepower and more to deal with. And yeah, guidancing Bad Batch with their steady, and then maybe even giving a clone. I mean, giving clone commandos. Maybe, like, you give them the order for Yoda's 2-pip, and that way, if they've maybe had to move and shoot for some reason, they, you know, obviously, their HQ uplink is down, so you give them that order, and then you kind of move them, shoot for free, and then recover, and then you guidance them mm -hmm. again, and they can move and then shoot again, and then you still have the Bad Batch that can move, move, steady. So you still got lots of really good plays even if you had to give commandos that extra order for relentless so that way you have more ways of shooting because if you're gonna what you could do is i mean you can still guidance the bad batch to, to shoot because i mean steady's gonna be great anyway but i guess if they needed to get into melee because they're gonna have a pretty powerful uh, obviously the, pa the bad batch will have a pretty powerful melee because it's like let's see one two three four red Five red, a black, and a white. Because mm -hmm. of yeah, they, records. They hit hard. Yeah. yeah. And they have impervious in melee, which is something commandos don't have. Yeah. So that definitely helps oh. a lot. And lots yeah. of surge tokens and a dodge and whatever and, else. Well, shoot. Even if you need to melee with Bad Batch, you can Relentless Bad Batch off a of 2-pip to right. double move Relentless Punch with that that pool with two aims now. Man. So, I think I think there's a lot of shenanigans to be had with that. Um, the other thing I think Bad Batch probably works good with is um, Obi-Wan. Because it turns out whenever you just don't have to roll saves, it's a good day. That's true. So, and then then your opponent's left with this interesting choice of because you're going to be running straight at them with Bad Batch. They're a range two unit, right? Right. So, if you run straight at them with Bad Batch and Obi Wan, and let's be cheeky and throw in some like DP twenty three phase ones, what do you kill? Like, <laughs> what do you shoot? The piercing phase ones, the Jedi protecting everything. Bad Batch is just going to destroy you when you get there. Like it's, it's very much a press W list, but I think it could be a ton of fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, see, it's all the other good options for Yoda, Chewie, and the Bad Batch and all that stuff is like 1.801, and that's just like the mm -hmm. worst because everything is down to the bare minimum of what you really want. And 
It's it's so tough. Uh, yeah. I guess we need a, a really cheap Gungan core that's like 45 points or something like that so that you can really fit in Yoda, Chewie, the Bad Batch, and some clone commandos. Right. Yeah. So. But yeah, man, that was but awesome. This is what I was talking about earlier. Yeah, no, for sure. Like I said, this is what I was talking about earlier. Um, Super fun competitive list. You're not taking ranks. It, it, it hurts to say because he's my boy. But you're not taking them, right? Um, but right. if you are taking Rex, well, rewind to the start of the video. Yeah. So. No. Yeah, man. Good well, that was, time. That was a, a a good explanation overall of Rex and the fact that he is a toolbox and that you want to you know go after the weak points with him and not necessarily think that he's going to be the most competitive unit out there especially for gar but a very at least fun and decent commander that can still be utilized especially now that the, like the bad batch commandos are out i feel like and the 501st so there's multiple different types of lists to really include him in that kind of can make him shine and you know i even played him with clone commandos and some arcs and padme and he, he did really awesome with that call me captain card being able to shoot into melee and help save a lot of clones from Ahsoka. So, yeah, I think, yeah. you know, hopefully we see more people try to bring him. Now, I know that you are against him having Impervious and Pierce. Just real quick, is like, what was your reasoning? So, we'll start with Impervious. Um, I would love for Rex to have Impervious. I think that would do wonders for his survivability and would really bring him probably up to where he needs to be. Um, however, a good buddy of mine called some of us uh, lore nerds fluff bunnies, and I fall in that category. Rex is an arc trooper, which is the argument I hear from Pervious a lot. And this is depicted in, he is tactical, and he has sharpshooter. He's got arc training, 100%. But if you look at the way, um, I think it was FFG that put Rex out. So if you look at the way he's modeled, he doesn't have the arc chest plate the heavy ar up armored plate. And so I'm like, I want him to have impervious, but given the way that he's depicted in the game, it doesn't make sense thematically for him to have impervious. And it's not ruling out they could give it to him because why not? Or give him a new sculpt in the future because they're doing the re-sculpting and give him the chest plate and let's go impervious. I'm here for it, right? But the Rex we have now and the world we have now thematically, if not wearing the armor, he doesn't get impervious. Sorry. Um, Pierce. Rex with Pierce and Gunslinger would be great. It would up his damage enough because you're going to shoot two different units, probably strip them two models at that point with Star Defender. Um, so killing four around, four models around out of two of two units. That would be really cool and fun, and flavorful, and not broken. Call Me Captain breaks Pierce. Well, what if on Call Me Captain it, they just say remove Pierce? That that would be an option. That would that would absolutely be an option. Um, at which point, Call Me Captain is just the way it is. And that could be a thing, but now you're erratic both call me captain and Rex's command card. I think myself a much more flavorful option that would increase his toolbox utility, but not make him broken would be to give him long shot. Hmm. Yeah, that'd be nice. now. It's interesting because now there's an argument to actually give Rex orders on um, take that clankers because what he can do is take the aim action kick both of his attacks out to range 3 spend the aim for a long shot now one of his attacks is kicking out to range 4 and if you can pull an aim from somewhere else now both of his attacks are kicking out to range 4 hmm. so um, I think long shot would be really interesting and even that, because you're rolling double reds, 
I mean, you're rolling three reds twice. Yeah. There's an argument here where putting long shot on him just throughout the game to be able to shoot one thing at range two and another thing at range three, or even just one thing at range three every round, would really add a lot to him in terms of usability. He'd also be poking his head a lot more, so be getting shot up a lot more. But that's his job, right? So he's not get, so other things aren't getting shot. Um, the the long shot's the best thing I've heard of so far to give Rex to increase. Again, I don't know if it puts him in competitive tier, but it's definitely a huge step in riding that line. Also, I don't I don't know if long shot can be used to increase the range of his fire support. I don't know how that interaction works. Somebody who's a rules lawyer, get back to me. I don't think so, because it's a fire support, not a an action, which I, like a, during right. his activation, so I don't think you'd be able to spend it for the long shot, because I think during the attack, not a fire support, you would be spending the aim, so I don't think it would work for the fire support. Right, right but it's also a weapon keyword, so I think you're right. I would love for you to be wrong, but I think you're right. Yeah. I don't know, yeah, I mean, I so. could definitely... Be- I mean, I I have no clue because I think the only people who have long shot that I know of right now are the uh, Ursa and Din. I want to say there's another one, but I you're probably right. Listen, guys, I play plums. I play rex. All I play is rex. Okay, my job's not to know what my opponent's keywords are, just to shoot them. Right. Well, and the other thing is, it's like they had Mando training to begin with. Like, weren't Arc Troopers the closest to? Uh, Jango, and then Clone Commandos, the second closest to Jango, and then Clone Troopers, that like most altered from Jango. So I feel like since they're the closest to like the Mandalorian style, and even the Phase Ones had a very similar Mando face plate, uh, I feel like Longshot would be appropriate for for Rex since he's a Phase well, yeah, a Phase One technically uh, a Clone Trooper. Mm-hmm. So it would make sense. I, even I feel like thematically. Mm-hmm. He, he is a phase one arc trooper. Yeah. So I think, like I said, I if you also errated Call Me Captain to not put Pierce on it and you give Rex Pierce, that's probably balanced enough to be usable. Um, I, I like the long shot play. I think there's enough cheeky there that it might actually be something. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> nice. So, well, but yeah, anyway, yeah, it, yeah, that was that was a really good uh, overview of Rex and kind of like you know, I feel like a great way to explain what he's good for and a few different lists that would work with him. So uh, I appreciate you being on here and and thank you for the the li- list ideas and explaining a little bit more about Rex and how you like to play him even. Mm-hmm, not a problem. All right, guys. Well, that is it for today. Uh, Leave Pally some love in the Discord and make sure to say hi to him for sure. And uh, any tournaments that you're planning on going to soon? Uh, My calendar's kind of open at the moment. I tend to last-minute tournaments whenever something clears up and I can actually get out to them. I think the only one that I have planned is um, Three Foot Goods doing uh, their fall brawl out in eastern Iowa this fall. And I'm definitely going to be going to that. But um, otherwise, I I get to them when I can, and I don't usually know that I can get to them until about a day or two beforehand. So, oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> lots of uh, lots of planning for yeah. that one, I'm sure. Oh yeah. So um, it's totally possible y'all might see me out in like Denver, or Minneapolis, or Dallas, or I. I mean, I, I travel a lot and get to them. I just you know. You won't know I'm there until you see me. Nice. All right, guys. Well, well, that is it. Y'all take it easy. Any last, any last words or any send offs? Um. Oh, where is it? Right here. There's a. What does this say? In the words of Captain Rex, in my book, experience outranks everything. Yes, that is a good one. Especially talking about uh, Ahsoka, but yeah. Well, all right, guys, y'all have it. Y'all take it easy and have a great day. Doodles.